All right. And here is a skin from where? How do you know? That's a good, yeah, hair follicles. And what else? What's down there? At the, mm -hmm. Skeletal muscle is usually down below the fascia, which is below the subcutis, which is below the dermis. So anywhere else in the body, you're going to have to go a mile deep to get down to skeletal muscle. If you see skeletal muscle getting up into the dermis, you're almost always on or near the face, the platysma of the neck, scalp, somewhere in that region. So it's a good way. It's good to learn those little clues that help you. What if you see a bunch of smooth muscle in the dermis? A bunch, like more than usual for the amount of erector pile. Like you normally see a couple strands of smooth muscle, but what if, the, what if you see a bunch of smooth muscle in the dermis? Where are you? Genital skin, right? Or nipple areola, nipple areola, labia majora, scrotum, okay? Those are the areas that you are. So it can be really helpful, especially on an exam. If they're not giving you history, you can kind of cheat in a way by saying, oh, look, I know this has got to be from the nipple. Or if you see squamous mucosa with a bunch of skeletal muscle, you're on the tongue. So you can really uh, narrow down your differential by knowing, oh, well, I know that this, 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 and this won't occur in this site. So it's a, it's a nice way. And in real life, too, it can help you when something gets swapped and you accidentally get something cut and they said it's from the forearm and you're like, I don't think so. Um, and um, don't ignore that. I've sometimes been like, oh, and blew it off. And then later, I'm like, oh, it was a swapped slide and I had to go back and amend my report. And, you know, trust your gut. Okay, so anyway, uh, after that, a little uh, walk down memory lane. Here we have something, right? This is an abnormal something. And how would you describe, how would you kind of describe these? Tadpoles, oh, that's the best, right? Little cords or strands of epithelial cells in the dermis in tadpole shape or sperm shape, if, if you like that analogy better. You gotta find the visual analogy that works for you, no judgment. Um, and uh, that's what my dermis would say, sperm in the derm. Sperm in the dermis is the way that they remember tadpole pattern. Or, or if you're a little more classy, I guess you could say paisley tie pattern if you're old school. Um, I don't know what a paisley is. I know what it looks like, but I don't know why it's called that. But anyway, these little cords in the dermis. So what's the main differential for this pattern? There's like four things people used to talk about. And what are they? Yeah, MAC, microcystic adnexal carcinoma. Desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. Morpheiform or infiltrative pattern basal cell. And syringoma. Very good. So it's really useful to recognize this pattern and know those things are on, are on your, um, your radar, okay? The problem is, is that we don't usually have this nice huge excision going all the way down to, to fascia. We usually get like this, a little shave and I get like three of these guys, okay? And that's really challenging, all right? So the way that helps me is if I see obvious ducts up here and they look tadpole shaped, it's almost always gonna be a syringoma, okay? MAC has ducts also, microcystic adnexal carcinoma, and it's a locally aggressive form of carcinoma. It's important not to miss. It's rare, but it's important not to miss. And it does not look atypical, it looks bland, okay? So it's really hard to diagnose. It has ducts too, but the ducts are usually down deep. There are some exceptions. When I rule, so the main thing I want to rule out is MAC. And then basal cell, I find most of the time you're going to see some islands of traditional classic basal cell um, if you get a big enough biopsy. Usually it's there, or there'll be a little mucin or a little cleft, something that'll tell. I feel like that's the one that's usually the easiest to rule out. Okay, so what I usually get down to is I'm between desmoplastic trichoep and MAC. And on a shave, I have a very difficult time reliably telling them apart. So usually if I have a transected desmoplastic trichoepithelioma, I'll tell them I favor, I'll say basaloid neoplasm of the dermis. I favor DTE, but I can't totally exclude MAC. I'd recommend an excision. And this happens like once or twice a year. It's not a common thing. And I would rather have a few patients get maybe more surgery than they need for a desmoplastic trichoep, but not miss a MAC. That's what I want if it were my face or my wife or my kid's face. So that's the way I handle those cases. But what you see here, both in MAC and desmoplastic trichoep, you see the tadpole-shaped cords. The stroma tends to be kind of fibrotic in the background. And you see these cysts. These cysts are keratinaceous cysts. They're little tiny uh, keratin or follicular microcysts, okay? Again, MAC, you will eventually usually see tubules. In real life, I think it's quite hard to appreciate. It's also hard because sweat ducts can get entrapped in the middle, and they do have ducts, and then they look like tubules. So I think it's hard. People have described all sorts of different stains to try to sort these out, like cytokeratin 20, which I've occasionally found useful. It will stain scattered passenger Merkel cells in the background of desmoplastic trichoep and other follicular tumors. And those cells are usually not present in the background of MAC or basal cells. So I've, I found that useful occasionally, but most of the time on a small biopsy, no matter how many stains I do, I'm still going to hedge and still going to tell them to re-excise. So I usually just don't mess with it. And I just say, here's the differential, re-excise. I feel like a, a big enough sample and H&E is what I need more than a bunch of extra stains. So that's my personal practical approach, but you can read the literature. There's lots of, the fact that there are so many stains described to sort this out, tells you that none of them work perfectly well and that it's hard. That's what Dr. Rupini said. You got a bunch of different treatments for something, 
It's because none of them work very well. And I think the same is true for stains. When we have to keep investigating new stains, it's because they're all suboptimal in some way or another. This is a good example of desmoplastic trichoat because we can see the tumor's limited to the derma. Okay, so here's desmoplastic trichoat. Challenging diagnosis.